Welcome to Woodwork Life. I'm Rick. Today we're going to have a shootout between three of the most popular number four hand planes. The Veritas number four, a, a restored Stanley number four, and then Harbor Freight's knockoff Bedrock number four. We're going to go through how to set these up, how long that takes, and the results that you get out of each of these. The Veritas number four is a hefty plane comes pre-lapped from the factory, has an adjustable throat, and also a lot larger grip for guys like me with bigger hands. Uh, it also has a screw action uh, lever cap as opposed to the traditional flip stop, and it has a, a different type of adjustment mechanism. The Stanley number four is the one most people are most familiar with. I believe this one would be called a bedrock because it has the adjustable screw in the back. The uh, blade adjustment is done with this brass screw here. Then you have the uh, traditional uh, lever flip stop, real easy to set up and get a good positive action on. Um, the Harbor Freight number four uh, is very similar to the Stanley, um, although not nearly as thick as steel. Um, the sole from the factory probably wouldn't have been nearly as flat. Um, I've been using this one for quite a while. So, and it's still kind of a work in progress to get it really perfectly set up, but the, the bottom is flat, um, the frog is flat, and I've actually upgraded the blade to a classic blade from an old Stanley. Let's do a quick unboxing of the Veritas number four smoothing plane here. Looks like the cardboard is basically vacuum packed on. It's really well packed in here. From the factory it comes the piece of plastic in there instead of a blade. It's really hefty. Looks like the bottom's already lapped and the sides are lapped too. You can see the adjustable throat there. I like all the brass details. And here's the PMV11 blade. It's nice and sharp from the box, not hair popping sharp. Sharp just needs a lap. Got it all honed, it's been about four minutes. I like to get about a 32nd of an inch, maybe a 64th. Just as tight as it'll go based on how square the blade is. Little adjustment screw here is a little bit of a bugger, but went together pretty quick. I like the way the flip stop is a brass screw instead of a flip stop. A couple adjustments off camera and here's the first pass. Perfect shavings every time. Now on to the Stanley. I got a 1950s era, it's not a sweetheart I don't think, with a corrugated sole. I had trouble finding one locally, so I went online and found one for 38 bucks. It's in pretty good shape, but uh, needs a lot of recovery. Throw it into a bucket and put in some vinegar, let it soak overnight. So I'm just taking all the parts here and putting them in a bucket. I'm not going to do a perfect restore on these, but I'm at least going to make them, you know, look a little nicer and function the way they should. The screw back here was a son of a... I should have taken the handle off first. The handles had a little bit of speckle of paint on them, so I'm going to take them off and uh, get them sanded down a little bit, put another coat of boiled linseed oil on them and some wax just to give them a nice finish. Sole's in pretty good shape, not sure how flat but look to be alright. This is 5% food grade vinegar, uh, just pour it in there, let it soak overnight and then Hit it with Brillo pads, sandpaper, and what have you tomorrow. Check the sand. Didn't help a lot. It's had a lot of finish on it, but got through it a little bit quicker. The back toad I hit with a rasp to break up the finish and all the hand oil that was over it from all those years of use. After a lot of time and sandpaper, I was able to put on a coat of boiled linseed oil. They turn a little darker than I would have liked them to, but they look great. I taped off the sole and gave it a couple of coats of lacquer spray paint. 
It's not an automotive finish, but it's enough to stop the rust from spreading. After that, I flatten the sole and the blade on a flat stone tile I got from Home Depot for free and uh, some 220 grit wet and dry sandpaper. Took a little bit of time in elbow grease, but got it nice and flat. After everything was flat and cleaned up, it was time for the moment of truth to put everything back together. I even cleaned up some of the screws and polished up all the brass. Went together really easily. I really like this plane. Alright, so let's take a look now that they're all restored at uh, which one can take the uh, thinnest shaving. Um, I know this is just kind of nice for getting that uh, sandpaper, better than sandpaper level finish that some people like from hand planes. Um, so let's start with the Veritas and see how thin of a shaving we can get with this guy. It's pretty good. Translucent. Not bad. Let's see what we get with the Stanley. thicker with this one. It's a really nice shaving actually too. A little bit thicker. Probably about a thousandth, maybe two thousandths thicker. Not quite translucent, but nice full length shaving. Alright, now let's look at what the uh, Harbor Freight can do. A lot thicker than the Stanley, but not bad. I need to get full width, I gotta go a little deeper, but there we go. Full width. Get it kind of choked up on the knot. But not bad, full width. It's pretty thick, it's about twice as thick as what the Veritas was doing, but not bad at all. Now for a little fun, take out the soft pine, well actually this is Douglas fir, and try to get a shaving off of some uh, end grain hard maple burl, a torture test I guess. Start, we'll go in reverse order, we'll start with the uh, Harbor Freight. That is not fun. A little thinner shaving. I don't think it's even touching it really. It's just kind of chattering over the top. These are all really sharp. Just it's flexing too much when I'm push, pushing on it. Let's try the Stanley. It's less blade. Get a little bit of a shaving, kind of chipping it off. See if we can go a little thicker. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at that. All right, let's see what this Veritas will do now. Closing right through that one. Let's go a little thicker. Oh. Not quite full length, but full width shaving of hard maple burl. That's insane. That's a true torture test, but I don't think I've ever seen that. That's end grain hard maple burl. You can see it's chipping apart my fingers. It's so hard. All right, so after putting all three of these through their paces, uh, restoring the Stanley, and just seeing what we can get out of all of them, uh, I think it's clear there's a couple winners, one winner, depending on how, on how you want to look at it. So like I said in the beginning, I want to cover this a little bit differently than your average shootout when it comes to value. 
So I wanted to factor in what your time is worth when you're putting together one of these planes. So something like the Veritas takes five, 10 minutes to set up. Uh, let's value our time at say $15 an hour. Um, that's $1.25 if you're doing five minutes um, to get this thing set up and producing perfect shavings. With something like the Stanley, um, it costs us $38 from eBay. You could find one at a garage sale for cheaper. You could find one almost fully restored for more. Um, but just going with this one, $38. Um, I chose the corrugated plane to give myself a leg up when it came to flattening. And uh, it took about six and a half hours still to get this thing fully restored and ready to use. Um, so six and a half hours at $15 an hour, that's uh, $97 to, uh, on this one to get it fully set up. Um, now if we look at the Harbor Freight, this is where the value really comes in when you factor in your time. This is $15 and I can get okay results out of this, not at all repeatable, but I've got more than 20 hours into this thing. It took six hours alone just flattening the sole from the way it was in the factory. Um, and I've replaced the blade and gone through countless iterations trying to get this thing to really deliver good results like what I'm getting from these guys. Um, so let's say 20 plus hours at $15 an hour. You're talking $300 of your own time that you're giving up just to get a cheaper tool. This thing's getting retired for me. Um, I'm going to give it to a friend and uh, he'll be able to play with it. And I'm sure he'll like it because he's newer in the woodworking world and hadn't put his own 20 hours into it. Um, between these two, um, when you factor in the amount of time to set them up, the price gets a lot closer. Uh, it, it's gonna be a toss up for some people because some people really enjoy putting their time into restoring a tool. Um, that can be a project in itself if you're a hobbyist. Um, for me, uh, I appreciate the modern features that they've added to the Veritas with the adjustment mechanisms um, and the, uh, the brass screw for instead of a flip stop is a little more repeatable. Uh, I just really like this thing. I also just like the fact that I know from the factory it's machined with intolerances. It comes with, you know, letters of certification from their quality control from the factory. So I know this is going to get me great results right out of the box. Um, would I recommend the Stanley? Absolutely. It's a fun project. I'm still going to use this thing. It was fun. Um, I like old Stanleys. Uh, I probably will end up collecting them over time. Um, but uh, they do take a lot of time that some people don't have. As a tradesman, I think it's a no-brainer. The Veritas is the way to go. When you need to get those accurate cuts, you know, clean up a clean up a cut line, you know, clear up some saw marks, the uh, the Veritas is the way to go. For a hobbyist, it's a toss-up. I mean, uh, the Veritas is better looking, I guess, but they're both pretty beautiful and they both have sentimental value. Um, that's really all I got on these guys. Um, thanks for joining me today at uh, Woodwork Life. Um, please check out our website and uh, like and subscribe below if you like what you saw. And please, in the comments, uh, let us know what you think. And if there's any other tools you want to see me do a shootout with, um, I'll try to get hold of them and, and put it on here for you. Um, again, thanks for joining me with Woodwork Life.